one. Year nine, year ten, year eleven, welcome to some revision on neutral tones by Thomas Hardy in preparation for your English literature exam. It is by no means everything that you need, it's just going to cover uh, some points that you might want to mention if you are aiming high. Thomas Hardy then very briefly was influenced by romanticism. Um, people or critics think that this poem was written about a maid. Uh, Thomas Hardy faced many disappointments in his personal relationships and I think that's evident in this poem. Um, and this, this idea of romanticism means that he, he use, usually uh, play, plays on or picks on or uses natural setting and there's usually an element of God mentioned. Um, through Thomas Hardy's other works he um, was fond of using God or a deity that was very wrathful which you're going to see in stanza one. If you haven't read the poem, it's probably a good idea that you have so that you can make notes easier. If you need to pause the video then just and just have a quick read, then do so. Very simply, the speaker remembers the time when the pair, the couple, realise that they don't love each other. The focus is on the sadness of the, the relationship ending rather than than love and the positivity of love and, and actually what Thomas Hardy's presenting here is that love is in fact the enemy and everything that we would see as positive like the sun is in fact inverted or has been changed to negative. The setting plays a huge part and you could argue that that is a um, pathetic fallacy. There's a huge tone of bitterness and, and, and something regretful uh, and nature, the setting is uninvolved and that's where we get the adjective neutral, that nature is just going about its own business. But interestingly enough, the, the setting he's chosen kind of feeds the themes. Your structure then is that he's got four regular quatrains, um, which is reflective of Hardy's own difficult personal relationships. The main constant here being disappointment, and this idea of him constantly being disappointed in his personal relationships is kind of reflected in those four regular quatrains. But arguably it's an elegy. Some people argue it's an elegy, some people don't. So again, in your answer, you can argue that it is. Um, an elegy is a poem of serious reflection, typically associated with a lament for the dead. Now clearly uh, Hardy is seriously reflecting on relationships here, but um, the death in this poem is, is, is the death of the relationship. So think about arguing that in terms of other interpretations. We always get more marks from the examiner if we offer alternative interpretations. Thomas Hardy as well experimented with patterns and he, he experimented with the meter of poetry and the rhythms and that's evident here where the meter changes slightly okay so if you go back to the slide with the poem the meter changes ever so slightly from line to line and perhaps this fits the theme of relationships that relationships are unpredictable are often difficult and are naturally emotional your rhyme scheme is A, B, B, A, and again, look at your starting with an A and finishing with an A, and it links to the cyclical structure, so the speaker is trapped. Ask yourself if he, if he repeats the same things in each relationship, and the, therefore the disappointment and hurt is, is, is evident, and it's always going to happen. And interestingly enough, stanza one and, stan and stanza four are very similar. Um, there's an interesting use of the rhyming couplet, the BB, placed in the centre of the quatrain, where it divides the A part of the rhyme. Now, if you're really picking apart the poem, which you should be if you want the 7, the 8 and the 9, the couplet and the divided rhyme implies that there's a distance between the two. And we know this when we read the poem because they can't even communicate anymore. Uh, and naturally, this boredom, the boredom of the relationship that's been kind of hinted at um, in, in the adjective tedious, has resulted in a breakdown. So the rhyme scheme could also work symbolically and universally serving to represent relationships and the, the obvious conclusions of relationships are either that you stay together or naturally you're apart. The title then has the adjective neutral um, which means not supporting or helping either side in a conflict, disagreement, impartial, unbiased or it's a pale grey beige colour. It also though means in chemistry that something is neither acid nor alkaline, it has neither a positive no negative electrical charge. Now this is interesting because the obvious answer is going to come from the, the colours there. Okay, If we start playing around with the idea that chemistry is what you need in a relationship and that there's their relationship here appears to be um, neutral, then we have no charge, we have no that, um, sexual charge, we have no emotional charge, they have lost it all. There are a few interpretations for the title, guys. Um, a clue that this poem is the speaker reminiscing, hence the lack of any significant uh, emotion. This is supported by the set in use and the fact that we've got colours like white and grey. Now, grey symbolically is linked to indifference. So that solidifies the title being neutral and it links to the fact that nature is indifferent to human relationships. Um, perhaps the lack of emotion is also a reflection of the last time the couple were together. 
The link to chemistry also implies that the emotional and physical chemistry has gone and perhaps even foreshadows the future for the couple, but also um, the speaker's uh, relationships in the future. However, we can argue that the emotions, rather than neutral, are more negative because we've got the season of winter, which is linked to the cold, and symbolically, the winter is associated with transition and change, and naturally these two are changing. Um, of the seasons, arguably, winter is the most treacherous and difficult, and therefore only the strongest survive. Unfortunately, this relationship hasn't survived, so perhaps they, as a couple, they weren't very strong. The analysis then, we begin with the inclusive pronoun we, which is a reminder, sorry I've missed the R reminder, that this is about a couple who at one point loved each other. This is coupled with the verb stood, obviously showing that the relationship has lost direction, it isn't moving forward, it isn't going anywhere. Uh, there's a subtle link to contemplating and thinking there, linking the past and the present for the speaker. And then when we get the idea that they are by a pond, and um, symbolically a pond usually refers to personal emotions. They show you are thinking deeply and reflecting on your own mood. So again, we've got the speaker reflecting here and it's in the symbolism of the pond. The sun has lost its colour, which coincides with the lack of emotions initially conveyed. And the symbolism linked to the sun, we know, is usually happiness, joy, radiance, positivity, and it's all gone. Um, it's absent. Um, the above imagery, I think, also has a biblical link to Adam and Eve, the fall of Adam and Eve, because they were standing by a tree and you had God and, and they, they, they fell. God is seemingly punishing the sun here and rebuking, hence the word ch chidden or chiding, the characteristics and the colour. It could be suggested that the speaker feels as though he's being punished as cyclically his relationships are all the same. So remember what I said about Hardy often using a God who, who punishes because he started to um, fall out of love with religion, did Thomas Hardy. The adjective tedious modifies the idea of a riddle here. The use of riddle, we know, connotates problems and puzzles that need to be solved, but the couple can't do it because in the next two lines and some words that they can't communicate. So naturally, the puzzle and the riddle of their relationship will never be solved because they can't discuss issues or emotions. Much like the sun from stanza one, the smile, which is usually related to happiness, joy and positivity, appears false here, as if she is, is putting on a facade. And um, there's an idea of hopelessness. Then we then get the superlative deadest, which has a tone of resentment and anger, and then the smile becomes a thing, as if he can't even look at her. And then look at the second line where we begin with alive and we end with die. This cyclical notion is present again, and the universal idea of relationships existing and dying seems to fit this. And the bitterness here juxtaposes the title, which was neutral, therefore supporting the idea that in fact it's more negative than it is neutral. The final stanza, we end as we started. The polysyndeton creates the effect of a list, suggesting it is something which has been repeated many times before and is supported by the repetition of the conjunction and, and, and. Grey now becomes greyish as though there's a slight change in this idea of something neutral. And look, you've got the, the face of the woman, God, uh, the tree, the pond are all associated with negativity. They're all associated with the inability for him to A, move on and, and B, perhaps love. Because in the top line there, we've got that love is deceitful and love deceives. Therefore, it lies to people. It misleads people. So the poem um, does end a little bit negatively, although grey, becoming greyish suggests, again, some sort of change. But we're still at the pond. We're still stationary. I did see that this would be very quick. It's by no means everything that you need. It's just a few ideas. Think about symbolism in the poem. Um, if you need any of the other poems, check my playlist. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Stacey Bay. And massive good luck in your English exam.